Hey there, Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets here. Thanks a lot for joining me for this micro nugget entitled Setting Up the Google Cloud Software Development Kit on Microsoft Windows. All right, consider this situation. You've begun to use the Google Cloud tools because you're interested in rapid application development and you don't want to have to worry about maintaining the server infrastructure. You're going to let Google take care of that. At this point, you may have the App Engine Software Development Kit, or SDK, all fired up and raring to go. But you're now, as you're learning more about Google, discovering things like, wait a minute, there's this thing called cloud storage that functions a lot like Dropbox. Why can't I create a front end in App Engine to make it easy for my users to upload files and put them in cloud storage? And then we have this other Google Cloud technology called Compute Engine that is essentially an army of virtual machines, and we can take those uploaded files and send them into the Google Compute Engine for further processing. Why can't I do that? Well, actually, you can do that. That's a perfectly good use case for Google Cloud tools. In order to do that, though, you need to install the Google Cloud SDK. The process for installing that tool set is a little bit different between Windows and OS X or Linux. So I'm going to assume in this micro nugget that you're using Windows and you're wondering what you need to get started. In fact, to that point, let's get started right now and I'll walk you through the entire process. Of course, if you have the App Engine SDK downloaded and you're using it, then I also presume you have a Google Developer account. You know that those are free, that the free tier in App Engine is very generous. Actually, the free tier in most of the Google Cloud tools is generous. There are some services that you will have to enable billing on the front end for. Compute Engine is actually one of those. So be aware that you'll probably need your credit card before you get too much further in this. In the meantime, go to this page here, which I'll put a short URL for on your screen right now, and you'll want to download the Google Cloud SDK. Now here's where the installation gets a little bit hairy. You'll notice in the quick start area, there's a Windows native install and a Windows SIGWIN install. First of all, what's the difference? Native means that you're working with Python, and again, I'm going to just assume Python in this video, but it could just as well be Java. You're going to develop that on your local machine in Windows, and you're not going to involve Linux in any way, shape, or form. Now, why do I mention Linux? Well, as you probably have noticed by now, many of the Google Cloud technologies are more natively inclined toward an OS X or Linux situation, and that's because Googlers themselves use those systems. My recent visit to the Googleplex, I didn't see a single Windows box. That's not to say there aren't any, of course, but definitely this is a Linux and OS X-centric environment with Google. That's just one of those things, you know. But anyway, I'm assuming here on my system, actually it's more of an assumption, it's just the fact that I have Python 2.7, I have the App Engine SDK, and I have the App Engine Python client libraries, the APIs, all installed on this machine. So I can download the Cloud SDK archive to my system, unpack it, it comes down as a zip file, and then in there, you'll see an old school batch file. I'll right click and choose edit so we can see what the source code looks like. It's very simple, really. It's going to set some environment variables and then just run through the installation. So I'm going to go ahead and double left click this and run it down. And what it's going to do is install a bunch of libraries, but just as importantly, it's going to give us some bin files, some binary files like gsutil and gcutil. GS is for cloud storage management from the command line. GCutil is Google Compute VMs from the command line. The SDK has a lot of really cool goodies in it. Now this is fine in a native Windows environment, but, and let me come back to the web page, if you're going to be working with Google Compute Engine, and in particular you want to be able to SSH or secure shell into those virtual machines from your Google Cloud environment, in Windows, you're going to have to go with SIGWIN. Remember that in Linux and OS X, you have things like an SSH stack pre-installed. You don't get that with Windows, unfortunately. SIGWIN is a bash shell. It's a Linux Unix emulation environment for Windows. So you, in effect, have a virtualized Linux box running in Windows. What's cool is that the SDK page here at Google Developers is a direct link to the appropriate SIGWIN archive. It's SIGWIN.com if you're interested in checking out the page. Another gotcha it has to be the 32-bit version of SIGWIN, not 64. 
As this warning says, the 64-bit version of Sigwin is unsupported due to a bug in Python 2.7. Believe me, I've tried to do 64-bit Sigwin. It does not work with Python 2.7 and the Cloud SDK. So you get the 32-bit versions, and then once you install Sigwin, you can choose the packages that you want. And I'm going to walk you through that really quick while I have your ear. Let me come back to my Downloads folder. Here is the Setup x86. You don't want to throw away that Sigwin setup file because it's actually what you use to maintain the installation as well. So I'm going to do an install from internet. The default root directory is going to be csigwin. I'm going to leave these defaults as you see here. Just next, next, next. I'll choose a random download site. Click next. The important page is this, where you choose your packages. And here's the thing, although I have Python 2.7 installed on my native Windows, you want to install it again in Sigwin. Remember, Sigwin is a self-contained virtual environment. So if you miss this step, you're going to hose yourself. I can find Python 2 in a couple different sections. I did a search for Python that's under Interpreters or it's under Python. And you can choose to download the binary, the source. I'm going to just make sure that the binary is installed. Is this the most user-friendly setup? Absolutely not. Another package you'll want is curl. Make sure that's selected for default. And you'll also want open SSH under the net category. And I'll go ahead and install all this and resume recording once it's down. Okay, so I have Sigwin installed. At this point, I could either fire up a traditional PowerShell or cmd.exe session in Windows. As long as I have my path environment variables set properly, I can access the majority of the cloud SDK functionality from there. Otherwise, I can use this Sigwin environment. I'll double left click the terminal to bring it up, and I'm going to use the curl tool to download the SDK package. You can get the URL from the page. I'll put up a reference on the screen so you can jot it down so you don't have to memorize or take a look at what I'm typing too closely. So I'm pulling that down, and it's going to install it. By default, it's going to tuck it under Home Administrator, which is fine asks if I want to send anonymous statistics. Sure, that's fine. Then asks what your environment is. Mine is Python, so I'll select 2. This is handy because it gives us App Engine integration from within Sigwin. As a matter of fact, you see a nice list of components that will be installed. The BQ command line tool. Basically, you get a nice command line interface to all of the Google Cloud components. And I'll let that finish. I'll cover using the Cloud SDK and the command line tools in another micro-nugget. In the meantime, I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.